is a rare exception to your efforts to really stop that have been unappreciated. I recognize your frustration. Again, I repeat the question, how can anyone complain about jobs coming into Kings Mountain? So let us consider these jobs. What percent of the resort's jobs are funded by the casino and not by the restaurants and hotels? Even if we would conservatively assume that only one-tenth of the jobs were in the casino, that would mean at least 400 of these jobs will be directly funded by casino gambling. Now, how much is the annual income of each of these 400 people? Is it safe to say that the average wage is $12,500? That is a low annual income, for sure. But many of these jobs are part-time jobs. So at least we plan on $12,500 coming in annually for 400 people. We can do the math, $12,500 annually for 400 people is $5 million. Can I remind you that this is $5 million that is being paid for by gamblers' losses? Now, what was that question that we were considering tonight? Oh yes, it was this. How can anyone complain about jobs coming into Cleveland County? Ah, now we are coming to a reason why we complain about these jobs. These jobs are being paid for by $5 million of gamblers' losses. Is it right to fund these jobs by millions of dollars of gamblers' losses? Furthermore, there will be a $340 million mortgage to pay off, according to the Kings Mountain Herald. Will this be paid off within 20 years? Even if only a fraction of this resort is the gambling part of the resort, this will still add several million annually to the $5 million of gamblers' losses. Is it right to run a business from $8 million of annually of gamblers' losses? And furthermore still, there is overhead, electricity, water, sewer, property tax, employee benefits, etc. that must be accounted for. Furthermore still, we have to keep gamblers coming back and having a great time, so but some money must also be paid out for some gambling or for some winnings. Therefore, gambling losses can be easily predicted to be at least $10 million. Now, what was that question we were considering tonight? Oh, yes, it was this. How can anyone complain about jobs coming into Cleveland County? Ah, uh, now we are coming to a reason why we complain about these jobs. These jobs are being paid for by millions of dollars of gamblers' losses. Is it right to run a business off of gamblers' losses? Mayor, uh, uh, Chairman, and, and Commissioners, but we are not a fringe group afraid of a few rare cases of gambling addicts. This casino will depend on many addicts in order to pay for enormous annual operating expenses. A casino will bring jobs, but at great expense countless losers. Is this what you want? If not, why not write a letter to the Bureau of Indian Affairs retracting support for this project? Ethics of our heritage 
and more importantly, of our future. This community is proud of our standards, and we will not stand by anybody who takes part in tearing them down for something as revolting as predatory gambling. We refuse to accept a government that profits by undermining <coughs> public virtues. Thank you.
I just believe that we're setting up the stage to destroy ourselves. Uh, I can't really see any good coming out of it. If you do a study of the social concerns, economic concerns, uh, there really is no good that comes out of a casino coming to lockdown. And I wish, I really do, I mean, I've been to many of these meetings, been to the city meetings in King People get up, citizens get up and speak, which is wonderful, but we never get a response or an explanation as to why uh, this is happening. And I understand maybe it's not your control or your, you know, you, you're not over it, maybe somebody else, but you guys have a big voice, and I wish you would express yourselves and come out against it. You know, Nelson Mandela said, for to be free is not merely to cast off one's chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. And I don't believe we enhance the freedom of the weakest in our society by bringing a casino within 10 miles of their homes. And the people that will hurt is the weakest in our society, our children, our neighbors, maybe some of our elderly people that live there, you know, facing them in the casino. And I just can't see any good coming out of it. I just wish you would rescind your letter and, and just really pray about it because that's what we intend to do for you, is just pray for each one of y'all. Thank you.
Well, um, that's, that's kind of the, the reason he's kind of like the end that justified means and the product, the end product, which is the jobs, is uh, justified by whatever means necessary. If it's people well, losing their money, if it's people, people losing their money, then, uh, then that's fine. But uh, that goes down to kind of morals of relevancy, but there is no right or there is no wrong, it's just that everything exists. Uh, uh, when they, when they, I, I'd like to uh, say a quote by uh, philosopher George Santayana. He said, the only thing necessary for evil to succeed is when good men stand by and do nothing. And uh, basically, if, if we the people don't stand by, if we stand by and something exists, then uh, what is what is to prevent that from uh, robbing our community from whatever uh, we've heard that the child is like, it could happen. But, I'd also like to mention another incident I heard of uh, at Cherokee Casino. Uh, 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 someone's uncle, he uh, gambled away his entire earning, his entire fortune, had nothing. He went out in the parking lot, put a gun to his head, and blew the brains out. And uh, God forbid that that ever happened here, but uh, if it does, then you have to live with yourself uh, with your decision and your uh, support. Thank you.
He has been with us since last January, and he has been a godsend in getting us to really evaluate and look at our values and our mission and get this plan to you. We also have our chairman of the Library Board of Trustees, Mark Hudson, is with us. And we have Shirley Lale and Karen Bell, who uh, were, took part in the process. They were in the focus group that talked about the Western uh, Library Services to the Western part of the county. Um, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Dr. Chow to, for an explanation of what you have there. That is the final uh, version of our strategic plan, which is required by the state uh, for us to continue to get state money. Uh, we have to have a, a strategic plan that is viable for five years. Dr. Chow. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Um, being a Florida boy, let me first off say that you guys have probably the best barbecue I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, Carol has been very nice to uh, introduce me to that here. Uh, I just want to walk you through the strategic plan. Um, and please feel free to ask any questions. And Carol will be happy to answer any questions as well. Um, starting with really the second page, I just want to start with a couple of community comments. The first one is is illiterate and employers cannot hire public libraries by people. The second quote, providing a place for kids with books, there's no price you can put on that. And then the third quote, finding what you were not looking for is a large aspect of using libraries. And really, I think those three quotes reflect kind of nationwide trends as far as how the role of libraries are shifting. And that's one of the big questions that the, the nation, really the world, are asking about the role of libraries. And I think um, as our study has shown, so far as many of the other studies that have done across the state, um, the, the focus on hard, uh, hard cover book, uh, hard copy books, excuse me, uh, is becoming a little less with a uh, shift in emphasis. And I'll go further into that in a second. Um, I'm going to skip over to the first uh, page one, uh, the introduction. So the overall study took place, uh, and although we began data collection in January, uh, Carol and I have been talking about this uh, in early fall, so it's really been a year long process. Uh, if you look at the um, initial paragraph in the executive summary, uh, approximately 300 people participated in the study, including uh, 14 interviews um, with many community leaders uh, throughout the county, uh, two community forums, two focus groups, um, a survey of 1,000 randomly sampled county residents, and also a general um, survey response. And so that's in terms of methodology, certainly we believe in uh, a wide breadth of data collection. Uh, and I feel very uh, good about, uh, although we would prefer a larger sample size, it's still a very good uh, diverse sample. Um, getting down to the bottom paragraph, uh, I think some of the shifts from the last 10 years, uh, 2004 to 2014, uh, again, less circulation of books in favor of computers, non-print circulation and program attendance. Uh, and what, was, what we see is a slight, small decrease in uh, hard, cover, or hard book circulation, but large increases in terms of internet use on computers, uh, website hits, um, and non-print uh, circulation. I just wanted to draw attention to that. Um, page two, in the middle of the page, uh, so when we talk about the library's role, kind of consensus uh, amongst different uh, methodologies, uh, the library's role is fulfilled through the public sector in areas that the private sector fails, free access to technology, early childhood education, and retraining of workers. I thought that was a very poignant uh, comment that uh, I think really underscores the value of libraries in the community. Uh, going down to the uh, bottom of that same page, Three members also feel that the library's a key change over the past decade. Uh, the clientele has changed from the upper echelon uh, to more middle class and lower uh, socioeconomic who are seeking free entertainment <coughs> and access to many free resources that the library has uh, so to the next page, and this is what we're running out of time. Um, the last full paragraph. Despite and in fact, because of the emergence of the internet, the community really does need libraries more than ever. Uh, while still serving its fundamental purpose of housing books and the community's historical archives, libraries are now more than ever multi-purpose facilities. 
truly a nexus point for government services and the citizens that is trying to serve. Access to the technology and the internet, certainly closing the digital divide, uh, printing and copying, classes, meeting spaces, community events, children and young adult activities, book clubs, books, and lots of books. I'll skip over to the final conclusions, which is on page five. So after all of the collection, uh, really five or six can be main um, conclusions. One, um, the community really does want and love libraries. Um, and really one of the things they're asking for is that that continues and continues to be strengthened um, and focus on its core services, like so access and services, education, children, youth programming, books, and other reading material. And I want to emphasize that books uh, and reading is really not arguable when we talk about art. Copy books and ebooks. Really, the question is: Do people want to read? And the answer is yes. So when you ask them, uh, they want to read all formats. Right? They want to access the quality reading material. Uh, number two: Increase marketing and research. So one of the things that stood out is that uh, overall uh, county membership with the library has decreased over the last ten years significantly. Uh, and so that's definitely a, um, a threat uh, as far as the use of libraries. Certainly, increase access to technology focus on organizational excellence and certainly in terms of one of the things that are happening with libraries across the country and certainly here too in Newman County is that uh, oftentimes patrons have better technology than the library itself. And so they'll come in asking for the kind of joke in most public libraries that January is a busy time where folks have got Christmas presents, right? And come in asking how they use this, right? And oftentimes librarians are frustrated when they haven't seen the technology either. Uh, so in terms of training, the need amongst libraries. Uh, increased hours of existing locations, of course, and endless budgetary constraints. The, the, the thing that we're hearing is that people really would like libraries when they need them. And a lot of business people, of course, have to work uh, and not have as much access as they would like. And then explore potential growth in unserved areas like Bowling Springs uh, was a question. And certainly, talking to some of the Bowling Springs community members, they do want library services, especially as the youth. Um, and young families continue to move in that area. All right, so um, real fast, we're going to, into the main parts of the um, strategic plan. It's a vision. Uh, we strive to make our library a destination for the county residents of all ages to explore, um, discover, and learn. And our director uh, came up with that uh, during our deliberations. Uh, mission statement, uh, the Cleveland County Library System empowers the citizens of Cleveland County enhances their quality of life by providing a safe, welcoming environment to access relevant information through books and resources, programs, and technology with the assistance of friendly, highly trained, and knowledgeable staff. And they really went this last sentence. Above all, we will provide respectful, positive, effective, and universal customer service to all the group in town. And then this is going through with the core values. So the couple of the highlight professionalism. Emphasis on excellence, expertise, and accountability. People want uh, the expertise of uh, professional and knowledgeable librarians. An emphasis on the public good. So, certainly, again, uh, the diversity of uh, patrons that um, visit public libraries continues to increase. And so, the emphasis is on trying to meet their needs uh, and help the community. And then, the last one, Value 5, love of learning, really the idea that public libraries are there really from cradle to cradle. The idea that the needs of the community really um, determines uh, changes uh, which be there throughout life. Core competencies, books, information, resources, and services. The only question about the value of libraries is the quality of the collection and the quality of information that you're providing to your community. So certainly the internet is pervasive, but the, the quality uh, and the vetting process of that information is questionable at times. So certainly the library term, the, the community turns to its library for trusted Core three, the idea of relevant community-based programming services and resources. So really the idea there is not just to provide resources, but to do things like we just did as far as reaching out to the community and make sure that we understand what their needs are. Core four by five, robust technology. So, so the idea that five to ten years from now we can have robots walking around is becoming more and more of the possibilities of the idea of technology and the need to provide training for that technology is something libraries are continuing to embrace more and more. 
and then outreach and marketing. So the resources that we have in Cleveland County are quite good. The problem is that it seems uh, that not enough people are aware of them. Uh, maybe you know, some people have fallen uh, prey to the stereotype that libraries aren't important. Uh, but uh, again, rest assured that they are. Uh, so certainly um, having more people uh, go to your libraries and things like that. So goal one, um, and these are all priority order. So as, as voted on by the public and the staff, including the county, uh, these are all uh, rank orders. Goal one, high quality books and other information sources. So 1.1, expanded uh, young adult collection. Um, so certainly the youth uh, and children are, are one of always the top priorities for public libraries. Uh, books and information sources for all ages. So again, the idea of, of Cross section of the community. So, high quality access and technology is goal two against the priority order. Uh, so, high end and reliable technologies, again, uh, the digital divide is still very real in this county as well as across the state of the country. And so, certainly providing access to folks with technology when they need it, especially those of you that those of in the community that do not have it, is critical. Uh, leading wireless and mobile technology, so a lot of technology is moving away from computers, per se, and moving more to wireless and mobile devices. And again, people come into the libraries expecting to be able to use that and access the collection. 24-7 web services, so again, more and more library services are not necessary transactions that occur in the libraries, but occur through the library website and its databases, uh, and social, certainly social media. And then 2.4, I think, is especially a critical nexus for digital literacy services in the county. So one of the things that came across in this assessment, as well as uh, statewide, is uh, uh, the community tends to trust libraries. And so when we say oftentimes that people discover things they weren't looking for in libraries, what counties are starting to realize is you can deliver a lot of different services to your libraries. And so I think certainly when we talk about technology, this is an opportunity for the county to really showcase this technology throughout the county and not just um, house it necessarily. How many minutes? Okay, a couple minutes. Uh, and then only two more goals. Goal three, organizational excellence. So again, the number one priority uh, as identified by the community was a, a demand for highly trained technology, tech knowledgeable staff. So obviously when people come into the library, uh, they want uh, answers. Um, Meeting and growing change demands in Cleveland County is so certainly one of the fo focuses of this needs assessment to make sure uh, that the system uh, was aware of the uh, priorities for the county, which uh, I think uh, we, we did a good job with that. Uh, and then building renovation interior redesigns so as the needs of libraries continue, where the needs of the community continue to drive the changes in libraries. Uh, obviously, the bread and mortar um, libraries of old change uh, and that, that is truly a fact and so certainly the idea of um, renovating uh, and interior redesign to reflect those changing needs uh, are important and then finally the final goal marketing outreach and programming um, so certainly number one 4.1 programming that supports economic development so really supporting the county's economic goals the library can support that um, and then again supporting um, the county priorities the library doesn't just exist on its end, but certainly is aligned uh, and um, flexible and resilient enough to support what is important. Thank you so much, Jackson. I just wanted to finish uh, thank, thanking Dr. Chow for his uh, consultation and, and hard work and barbecue fun dinners that we've had over the year, but I also wanted to pass out to each of you a little quick fact sheet if you ever, you know, somebody ever asks, well, how many people visit your libraries? A couple of little things. The main one I wanted to point out to you is the bottom one, and that is we can't do it alone. We have wonderful partnerships with many people and institutions in the county that build on what the county does for us, which is absolutely the crucial part. But if you'll notice on there, the American Legion World Series worked with us and sponsored our summer reading program. And each child who finished the summer reading program got a ticket, an all-event ticket, to, to the game.
games. And so we were so thrilled at that, and that was such a big hit. So it's partnerships like that that really keep us going, and we just want to say thank you for all of you. Thank you. And we'll be glad to answer any questions. <coughs> Any questions for Dr. Chow or for Carol? Yes, yes, I got one. For Paul you know, for a county that uh, you know, can litter and so forth, was that research or was that just a comment? Because I thought we were doing real well on bringing our people up to speed with the uh, college and no. work they're doing in different organizations. Is that that something? There, it's still an issue. Um, I think it's where it, it's. You know, the, the definitions can vary between illiterate and functionally illiterate. And as we say, we're, we start at the cradle. We have babies that come in for programs that sit on a parent or grandparent's lap. And we're giving them skills that will eventually help them to learn and to learn language and to learn reading and things like that. So we say we're in the business of preventing illiteracy. Okay. Okay. But it's still an issue of uh, a partnership for children. I was on that board for 12 years. It's, it's been a struggle. It's, there are a lot of people out there who may be able to sign their name, but they functionally don't have a good, you know, they can't read a contract. They can't read a bank statement, you know, they're, they may be able to write their name and sign to get their paycheck or something, but, but the issue is there, and, and we work hard for it. So. Yeah. Appreciate all y'all doing. I know y'all do a fine job, and I've got a few questions that I'd like to ask. You said you, know, you, attended, you, know, you attended the library, okay? Mm -hmm. and that's everybody in the county every day that comes in. You have a record of repeating visits. Like, you may have one person that come, may come three times a week, we, we don't have we don't have a way to count that our system because of privacy issues does not record like whenever they check out I mean as long as they have something checked out yes we have it on thing but the minute they turn it in it's gone that's for their privacy you know the FBI well, I'm, is I'm getting in all that but so we would know how many families are now, I, I, because I, I'm losing the question is school system and it just happened in Rockford County. Rockford County put an iPad in every student's hand and they take it home. Okay? The system is putting out Wi-Fi in every house. We just recently got a group that's putting towers in the county. Mm -hmm. They're going to start supplying Wi-Fi for the kids that on free lunch or reduced lunch is my understanding. And in talking to the school system, they're buying more Right. iPads to put in the students and is this going to cut down on the use of having to go to the library? You, you would be surprised how many people come in to use our library who have equipment, they have computers and tablets and everything at home, but they can't find what they're looking for. We've got the expertise to help put them together with the information they need. They'll go, I've searched and searched and searched the internet and I can't find it. We know how to get it to them. The other thing is, they'll come in, they're traveling. They're from out of town, they're a businessman, they're doing business here in the county, they don't live here, they stop in to check their um, email or, you know, something. They, uh, my printer doesn't work and I need to print th this out, you know, for school or whatever. They come in and use our thing. As I say, you know, we have, 31,000 plus uses of those computers, uh, as I say, and, and about a thousand per computer times that the staff helps people with, you know, all the issues of finding the right information. It's amazing when someone comes in who's an adult and sits down and looks up what they think is good information and we just happen to be helping them and they go, oh, here's what I need. And what they were going to rely on to write their paper for community college was actually written by a fourth grade class. Sure, sure. And, and, I, and, I, and it. so I, I, I guess the question I had with the technology that's coming and being available to our citizens through iPhones, iPads, 
and the amount of money we spend on technology, are we looking at a balance? Or are we gearing up for something that we're not going to? We're, we, it's my opinion and the opinion of the profession that we, there will always be a need for us to be guiding people in their use of technology. If I may speak to that, that's mm -hmm. a really good point. I, I think that really you have to look at technology as a means to the quality of information in the library databases to live in collection. Uh, so certainly you can have an iPad, but a lot of the information out there is not free. Even free stuff is probably not stuff you would be screening anyway. So really the idea of, even if they have a wireless iPad, you want them to have access to quality information in the databases, right? That would be number one. Number two is that I think the other thing which you're absolutely right, sir, is that uh, libraries are becoming more and more meeting spaces. So you can also envision the fact that if, uh, in fact, people did and were empowered with that type of technology, they still would need places to gather, uh, places to meet. And libraries, again, are serving that need where you know, the idea of maker spaces, or idea of information commons, is a safe place where the mom and dad want to drop their kids off. We drop them off at the library and meet, you know, friends and things like that. So absolutely. And I think the other thing I would say, last thing I would say, is that the community needs assessments are always different. So depending on your community needs, if in fact you got to that point, then uh, the question would be, does the community still need access to quality, free information, safe, and then knowledgeable individuals? And the answer almost always is yes. It might be configuration may change, but it's almost always. And, and it was told us at a meeting recently that by 2017, the state is going to go to total digital textbooks. The students will not have textbooks. And I'm sure that that will happen in the higher education. But we promote lifelong learning. Somebody may need some training for, to get a job because the job they had disappeared and it's not ever going to come back. So they need something else. To, and that's where we can step in and put them in touch with the databases that will help them with career choices and uh, learning opportunities to train for another career. Um, so all of those things, <coughs> people evolve in our, in, a, in our thing, but what we will be doing is that guiding and providing and connecting that people need. Well, that was super fast. Well, that girl, I think mm -hmm. the other thing that to keep in mind is that there's always going to be a digital divide. Yeah. So if you're yes. not passing by the hands, now the, the well to do have robotics or whatever it might be. There's always going to be that group that can't afford but everybody else can afford. And again, the li libraries tend to be the great equalizer where you can you can uh, give the libraries a you know, high quality resources that they're going to share So the return on investment for libraries are staggering because you can put good technology, excellent technology that everybody can use, right? It kind of evens the playing field. And, and that's a huge return. Commissioners, any other comments or questions? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dr. Chow, I believe I uh, actually met you for a few minutes in King Mountain. Yes. Uh, you were talking to the chair at the time. Uh, the first question is, are you actually doing a strategic plan for Monday Memorial also? Uh, not, not at this time. Not at this time. Y'all just basically made you that. They, they are on a kind of a different schedule. I think they did one last year. And so they would not be one again until 2018. Well, Carol would love me to talk to them as kind of part of this. Right, because we, we do, you know, have our, we share our catalog, we share our, you're a member of one library, you're a member of all of our libraries. Um, you know, we act as if we are one unit, but we are in two separate governments. And uh, the one comment I would like to make is because, you know, I am next door. <laughs> and, um, so I'm, obviously I see the traffic that goes into the Moon Memorial Library. And there's, there's always going to be a certain niche in there that's going to need that to access the library and the computer. If I'm not mistaken from sharing, they actually have to go in and sign in and you have a waiting list to get on the computer. Okay. And then of course you get they get the help too. They just can't go in and just sit down and occupy the uh, computer space for hours on end. Because of the we we have to limit it to two hours a day because we can't we would 
we would just have people waiting out the door. Carol, uh, uh, speaking for um, Monty Thornberg at the Senior Center, um, they are offering more and more classes to seniors mm -hmm. and computers. And of course, I'm not going to buy one, but they're going up to the library and use them. And the one biggest complaint that I have, we have a website, but the one biggest complaint I have for most seniors is you don't have the obituary on the obit on, on the website. <laughs> so we have to make sure we fail and get it on there for them. But uh, I'm just surprised at the age of some of the individuals who have uh, become computer savvy more so than I. But uh, I say I, I, said we got I mentioned for a minute, but uh, it wasn't long and it's good to see you. I think, uh, I'm sure uh, Carol, it's very important for us is to continue our partnership with you because one of the things that's really concerning to us in a lot of ways is the, the poverty level of the county. Yes. And uh, it's not good, uh, which certainly means that there's going to be more traffic uh, causing necessity to you. And one of our dreams, I think our goals, to be to lower that poverty level, but still there's going to be a tremendous amount of services that you can provide. And, Thank you for and we welcome every single person. We, um, as I say, when you ride a bookmobile, which we now have as an outreach van, but when you ride a bookmobile like I did years ago, and you go to a house where the front porch on one end is held up by a commode, you got to think those people don't have much, but they have a love of reading. They wanted that bookmobile to stop every month. So those are the people you want to get to, and you want to get them young, and you want to convince them that that's the way to go. And so that's what we work hard to do. I'd, I'd like to, to uh, say thank you, uh, Dr. Shell, for all your work on this. And, and Carolyn and I appreciate Dr. Newton to serve on the, on the board. I've, I've enjoyed that. Um, and I'll, you know, as far as the library system in Cleveland County is concerned, you know, some of my best memories um, involve the library. Um, when I was growing up, going to move um, after school a lot of days, after one, I you know, keep them out with the schools. A lot of times I'll get to the library. Uh, my kids end up out there. When I come to visit you over to over the funeral home, they'll go next door, and, and I know that's a safe place for them to be, where they can. It's a it's a nurturing environment. It's not something that they just they're going to sit down playing their video games and things like that. They have an opportunity to learn and do their homework there. And, um, <coughs> You know, the, the library here, one of my best memories was uh, taking my son. I had a Star Wars thing, and uh, my son wanted us a Jedi Knight. And uh, <laughs> you got to see all the other characters there. Y'all did it up right. Thank you. Yeah, yeah we great did great time. Great. That's a lot. Y'all did a great job. I would like, it, if we can, if we can recognize all the friends in the library, the, the library uh, board members, anyone that has, that's here for tonight for the library, if you please stand up just so we can recognize you. Thank 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 you. And it's hard to explain now. What I'm going to do. First thing, good evening. Uh, it's it's uh, what I what I was going to say. Thank you for having me here. Uh, I think it's about the first thing that I want to say is that it's 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 um, simply gets us more in line with that. Um, it's had nothing to do with physical day to day operations. It's simply a financial reporting and asset management threshold change. Um, yeah, I'll be glad to answer any direct questions, but in essence, it's, it's just that. It has nothing to do with budget operations. Um, it's just at what amount that we capitalize assets that we can purchase. If, if I could. Because the, the easiest thing for me to understand is whenever, you, whenever I heard an example of what how this actually impacts impacts our 
county or, or in, impacts our right. uh, so you county. Can do you an example? So, um, so if the county purchased or built a building and spent less than a certain dollar amount, um, the building would have been capitalized. It wouldn't, we wouldn't take ownership of the building. It would just all be expensed at one time versus, um, versus recording that as an asset on the county. So in essence, you bought a home, that, that's an easy example. Um, you had $100,000 per house, would you just be $100,000 less rich or poor, or would you have you know, a little less money in a house? So your, your, your financial status doesn't really change. You're not poor because now you have this asset called a house. Uh, so does that help? Um, it's just, does that, does that example help? It, it does bring us yeah. up. I asked the question about four or five times. I had yeah. to explain four yeah. or five times. Well, I understand. Okay. What, what, is, what is the threshold? <laughs> um, right now, it's, it's, there's only a couple categories. For a building is the one that's, that's the inland is the one most out of um, context with what our state representation, yeah. military financial statements kind of suggest it's 100000 So that would go to 15 based on the proposal that you have in the packet. Um, so, it, and, and, and there are, um, I don't know all of the terms off the top of my head, but, but they're all uh, need to be adjusted pretty severely. Vehicle? Vehicle is, motor, vehicle and motorized equipment are, are broke out separately. Um, on here, they're suggested to be 10. I think they're, they're about double that right now. I don't want to speak exactly because I'm not sure. I'm I guess the asset that we do is pretty sure you allow it over. Not if you don't capitalize it. You don't capitalize any of them. If it's over the threshold, then you capitalize and appreciate it. If it's not over the threshold, then you expense all the time. Yeah, well, you know, you said 10000 for a vehicle, a vehicle we buy from the sheriff's department is over 10000 So that would be. Yeah, all of those. If you buy yeah. a vehicle. And you depreciate them over the years? Yeah, over, I think, a vehicle was a five year useful life. So. And the, the useful life of the county has a, is, is in line. Uh, I'm not proposing to change there, just the capitalization threshold. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if it's possible, could I get uh, our county clerk here to repeat everything that Brian said so that we can. Do I hear a motion to adopt or deny the adjustment? Thank you, Mr. We adopt this proposal to divide up the state. Got a motion and second. And second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. All right. That brings us down to the public hearings uh, portion of our meeting. Um, after the public hearing has been open, persons wishing to speak for or against the proposition will be asked to come forward and first state his or her name and address. All comments from the public are to be directed to the board. There are no comments directed at other members of the audience. If the speaker has a question, that question is to be directed toward the chair. No one will be allowed to speak at the hearing more than once unless the chair recognizes the speaker a second time for rebuttal of information brought forth after a speaker has spoken. The original presentation by the speaker will be limited to no more than five minutes. The rebuttal presentation will be limited to no more than three minutes. And I would like to ask um, Chris if you'll come up and that was on the amendment for 2537 and 2543 over a program. We have a zone map amendment request and the petitioner is J.E. Luckadoo and he's requesting to change the zone into two adjoining properties. Um, one, as you can see, is on general business, and the other is manufactured home parts. And he would like these properties to be zoned restricted residential. Um, properties located on the Oak Road Road between Shelby and Kings Mountain. And it's adjoining Moss Lake on the east. And it's adjoining an existing restricted residential property on the south side. And then you have some residential and neighbor or manufactured home parts zoning across the road. Um, there's an existing commercial, an abandoned commercial business on the property. And bring a, a rezoning property would bring it in character with the, the Moss Lake property surrounding it for residential uses. And you do have two 
recommendations, one from isothermal and then one from the planning board. Isothermal, they recommend to approve it and they uh, indicate the land use plan that it is compatible with the land use plan. That area is designated as residential and they also indicate that it would be uh, compatible with the, the lake properties, the residential lake properties surrounding it. And the planning board also recommended to approve with the same um, indications of the land use plan and the character of the neighborhood around it. And I can answer any questions. Does anyone have any questions for Chris Tristan? All right. That will open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak for or against, can you please come forward and state your name and address, please? Anyone wish to speak for or against? All right, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Commissioners, your thoughts? Move to approve. Second. Uh, motion to approve and a second. It's just easier with the landlord request that most of the time it's an argument I love especially. <laughs> Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Commissioners, we're done with commissioners' reports now. And um, we'll start down here in the table first. Um, it's really actually August.
help us with it. I think Kerry is getting a hold of a couple of people for the range monitor so we can move them over this thing. I don't know, but I'm hoping in the next 60 days we can have this thing bidded out, you know who the contract is going to be, and get to work on it. So if you're feeling, yeah. Yes, sir. And like I say, we've uh, I've talked to one of the municipalities. They're interested in having some lighting. And as we get to be at the end, we've got all in the field, so there's going to be an opportunity for different organizations that want to participate in the public gallery. The public gallery will be open to the public at all times, except the times it's going to be down for maintenance. And two, it's going to be a place that we can train individuals, whether male or female, that does not know much about firearms our people to be safe in the county. This is going to be a place that we can provide a safe environment for the guys and ladies that enjoy the shooting sports. For example, 37% of the Pittman Robinson Fund, which is tax dollars that the hunters and the fishermen and the shooters have voted on their seven years ago, comes from just average shooters that like to get out and enjoy the sport. They don't have a place to do it. So. This is going to be the nicest gun range probably in the North Carolina and most of the surrounding states. So, uh, with that being said, I will take questions from the commissioners if you have any on the gun range. And Willie, Willie does want to challenge you to a match. All right. Yeah, you don't have a chance. <laughs> so, uh, do you have, have anything to add to it? I might have missed that. And Kerry, I'm going to ask Kerry. Kerry was there also. Since the company she worked for was, was, was contract grade and so forth, and she was a big asset in the meeting with us. So uh, we had the financial people there. And, uh, I think we had everybody at the table that was uh, pertinent in getting this thing going. So the next step is, and any ideas, a couple of weeks, we should have everything back in a couple of weeks and ready for being shut Yes, sir. I think the next step is for. Uh, just, just to ask to get together and to work out the, the technical details of the bid documents uh, to make sure that whenever we do our, our pre bid meeting and we invite contractors to come in that we're able to answer questions, so we, get a very, we have a very successful bid process uh, uh, as we move forward on the project. So I think that's a good job. We're looking at naming some positions that will come back to you at a later date. The project engineer, the project manager. Range master and a couple of things that we're going to try to put in place in the next 60 days and we'll come back to the commissioner and uh, ask you for your approval so there'll be no question about it. But uh, with the guidelines that y'all set for us, we pursued it and we're staying within the, the guidelines that you approved for us. And uh, hopefully, that uh, for, for some of the elements don't know, the gun range is going to consist of. 250 yard rifle. Okay? Beside it's going to be a 50 yard pistol lane that be burned, fixed for safety. Okay? And then there's another area that's going to be skeet trap and modified clay that you can come and shoot if you enjoy it. Okay? Along the creek, there's going to be a 3D archery target that you can walk around the creek and shoot 3D archery. Also on the back side, and this is all of the bids that we're looking for some sponsors, we're going to have some uh, individual ranges that can be set up for jump gun, three gun, uh, cowboy shooting, uh, boys, boys and girl clubs, BB, small arms, something that, that we can teach the kids the point of safety on this range. So it, it's going to be something for all ages except the, the, the smaller the smaller kids are going to be certain rules and regulations and classes and throw out air guns and things like that that we're going to follow NRA guidelines on it so they've got some specific guidelines with age limits and different things so the main thing is that the range is going to be safe but if somebody hurt we're not going to have anybody hurt you have to add anything Thank you, sir. Mr. Chair, first of all, uh, thank each of you for your support that you gave to the World Series. And thank you especially to 
citizens of Cleveland County who really made, made it an overwhelming success. And our county went nationwide on live uh, TV, which I think was received uh, in an exceptional manner. Also, um, Cleveland County was recognized at the National Convention for doing an outstanding job with the World Series. First time uh, I've been told that the National Convention has done such an honor. So the citizens of the county were, were honored. And Mr. Hutchins brought along a lot of county pens and ran out. So the county pens are, are being worn by American Legion delegates across the country. Um, also, uh, we suffered a very severe loss uh, during the convention. Uh, most of you probably do not know the gentleman, but Jerry Hedrick, who was uh, one of the three highest ranking officials in the American Legion organization and a principal component and driver of, of the World Series, landed in a permanent location and, of course, being located in Shelby and him living in Lexington. North Carolina. He was uh, a very strong advocate for landing in North Carolina and landing in Shelby. Uh, long story short, he had a history of heart problems and he passed away in a breakfast meeting, massive heart attack on Monday morning of the convention. So it's a, it's a huge loss. Uh, it's, a, it's a position that would be hard to be feeling and we should remember Marie, who was his wife and her, and her family. Very sad time. Thank you. Um, members are with, uh, with their family and with the American Legion. I know how uh, involved he was in, that, in their organization. And I'd like to congratulate uh, you and the, the uh, volunteer team. Y'all did an outstanding job with the American Legion this year. It was uh, every year at the end of the, it seems like at the end of the series, the, the question always comes what are you going to do bigger next year? And y'all always top it. So, uh, appreciate what y'all done. Uh, the uh, commissioners tomorrow, the Veterans Council is going to be meeting uh, uh, to develop a strategic plan for their Veterans Council that, that this board had created. Um, and uh, Carrie is going to be helping lead that, that group in, in developing their strategic plan. So, Carrie, appreciate what you're doing with that. And uh, it has been an extremely busy couple of weeks. So, school started back uh, since we met last. Um, so that's, you know, I've got two kids in school, that's, that's, that's front four on everybody's plate. Um, so um, be thinking about the kids. Regional Task Force, um, I know Susan is, uh, we've asked Susan to lead that. She has done an outstanding job uh, with the Regional Task Force and has really got the ball rolling. Um, started developing some community partners and uh, I'm excited to see the direction on that. So, um, one other thing I want to mention before I turn it over to this side of the table is um, tonight we're going to lose one of our regulars in a meeting. It's going to be, this is her last night, but she's going to be coming here, I guess, on an official capacity, and that's uh, Jessica. So Jessica Pickett's with the STAR. Uh, we've enjoyed having you at the meetings. You've done, a, you've done an outstanding job, and uh, it's always been good to, good to have you in the audience. So, um, commissioners, or, or staff, anything on this side? Nothing, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. okay. Mr. Chair, I think one other thing, Luke, with the gun man. I've, I've been invited to go and speak to the, to the, the North Carolina Association for Landfills, the North Carolina Association for Landfills, in October. And what they've been looking at is uh, reclaim landfills, buffer areas. What can we do with the land that we've got? And it just so happens that we've probably got one of the largest projects going on in the buffer area of the landfill, which is land that can't be used for nothing else. And not only for the gun range, but there's other ideas out there for the gun range, for emergency driving pad for the fire departments, ambulance service, the police department is in the, in the future at some point in time. And even talk with the college about the education facility there for the train and police officers and different other groups of people that go to the college. So I have to to mention that, but going down in October and uh, do a presentation on that. And uh, Henry and Carrie uh, putting together a PowerPoint for me. 
Anything else you want to talk about tonight? Nothing. I'm going to take a motion to adjourn. No. Second. Third. Always remember this. Go home. Thank you.